it's Licia with the Digital Jampreneur. And in this episode, we're going to talk all about live streaming, the equipment that you need, including your webcam, your lighting, and your microphone, your backgrounds, the software that I use to go live, and just different tips and techniques to make your live streaming a success. All right, let's go. Today is an amazing day. Do you want to know why? Because today we're going to be talking about what? Live streaming. <laughs> uh, so I'm really excited to teach today's class about live streaming because so many of us have been now thrown into this world where live streaming is so important and uh, might you might not know like what equipment you should use or um, what software you should use, what I'm using. So I'm going to walk you through some options, some affordable options, all the way up to some of the best options for live streaming. Are you ready? Are you excited? If you are, let me see a wave. I can see you. Go ahead. Just wave, right? And say that you're ready for this. Ready, 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 ready. Let's talk about live streaming so globally, oh, where's my globe? I'm gonna reach, reach, yeah, here's my globe. <laughs> so we've been live streaming for years. In fact, I had my first live streaming account back in 2005 with a company called GoToWebinar. But as the pandemic hit uh, globally, so many people were forced into this situation where they really had to understand and learn live streaming and a lot of us are still learning it um really quickly because we now had to work from home using the webcam and our devices as the ways to connect with others throughout the world now i was in malaysia i was in asia in uh in january of 2000 so then i was then i flew from asia all the way back to the United States to go to an event in Atlanta. And then I flew from Atlanta to North Carolina, North Carolina, like I was flying around all the way through March when things really started to lock down and I really started to understand what COVID was. So I was speaking at all of these events and then it just stopped. All of the international speaking events that I was doing came to a halt. And now all of the summit started pivoting and doing everything on the computer. So instead of speaking um, on a stage in South Africa, I was now speaking via webcam and microphone to people in South Africa and people from anywhere in the world could tune in at the same time. So as we've all been thrown into this new world of live streaming, it's so important to know um, you know, the different equipment that you should have and the different things that you could do to really make live streaming a success for you. Okay, so now let's talk equipment. Do you have any equipment right now for live streaming? Maybe you have good lighting or webcams or a microphone or a background. Do you have anything yet? If you don't, it's okay, because we're gonna go through that now. But having the right equipment is essential. Like it really is essential. Having great audio makes a big difference as I just move the microphone closer to me. <laughs> but having great audio really does make a difference as well as your lighting and your webcams, your microphone and your background. So we're gonna dig right into it, take some notes, get out a pen and paper to take notes. I also have links throughout this whole presentation so you'll be able to write down where you can go on Amazon to buy the things that I have purchased, okay. So we're gonna also talk about software from the less advanced to the ones that are more advanced. And we're even gonna talk about what I'm using. Then we're gonna talk about you. When you're doing a live stream, how should you sit? Where should your eyes be? Where should you look? And how much of your body should be in the frame? We're gonna talk about some tips, uh, how to start a live stream, how to end it, and how to keep a live stream engaging. Are you excited? Yes, say yes. I can hear you, say yes. <laughs> I know that you are. All right. So let's talk about, I see all those yeses. Let's talk about equipment. 
let's start off in our big equipment list with lighting. One of the most important things is lighting. If people can't see you, you won't be able to keep their attention. Now, natural lighting is always preferred, but if it is not possible, there are um, some options for you. So let's talk about natural lighting. So with natural lighting, you can have light um, in front of you, so coming onto you, which is usually what I prefer, and I'm gonna show you my setup in a minute, or you can have natural light behind you. So for example, a window behind you. Right now, let me turn around my webcam. <laughs> uh, you can see my lighting and my whiteboards. Right now, my window is on the opposite side of the room so that I can take advantage of having as much natural light as possible. Now I have to reposition my webcam. Like it was in the perfect place. Now you can see the door frame, but you know, this is a teaching class. Okay. So <laughs> did you see the natural lighting? So I have the natural light, the window right there. And then I'm behind the window to try to get as much natural light in the room as possible. So <clears throat> what you need to do is figure out what's best in your situation. So you can sit with the window behind you or with it in front of you and see what looks the best on the camera. So the lighting that I'm using right now is called softbox lighting. It's 135 watts and it's 65 US dollars on Amazon. So let me show you those lights real quick. I have one on this side pointing at me and one on that side pointing pointing more towards the background and the wall um, to light it up. So it's pointing against this background, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So I would adjust it based on how I want the lighting, but this is the lighting that I use and it's called um, a softbox and it's by Foamia. Um, one of the things about lighting is that it is tricky with glasses. So, uh, the, the brick is a background. Yes. Um, but it, it is tricky with glasses. So if you look at my glasses, when I'm looking in different places, so the reflection off of the computer screen will also reflect in my glasses. So I want to turn down the brightness on my computer all the way down if possible, which is what I just did. Also, I want to make sure that the lighting, whatever angle I am at, they're not showing in my glasses. So you can see if I move my head up too high, do you see the light? Oh, it's right there. Do you see the light right there? So it can be tricky with glasses. Having said that, I just went to the eye doctor yesterday for contact lenses. <laughs> so, but you know, you have to play around with it and see what works best for you um, with the lighting that you're dealing with. Okay, so that's what I use, softbox lighting, alicialittle.com forward slash softbox, S-O-F-T box, if you want to grab that. Now, the next lighting that I have, which is actually in a different room, is a RGB LED photography lighting. And this lighting comes with, it's like a more powerful lighting. Uh, it's generally used for photos, but also obviously for live streaming, it's good as well. This is the higher end version. It's $369. It also comes with soft filters that like these soft box lights that I have right now, they have a uh, screen on the top of it just so that it's not the bulb standing out there. And so with these lights there, you, you can put a filter on the top, which is what you see those three lined up to make it better for you as well. Got it? So if you're interested in those, to find them on Amazon, alicialittle.com forward slash RGB, and you can find those on Amazon. Okay, we're getting through the lighting now. <laughs> the next we have is a ring light. I have a ring light as well. I like the ring light on a tripod so that you can adjust it. This provides additional lighting, really tricky in eyeglasses, or if you have a background that's like a TV screen, it will reflect in that as well. But I love a good, uh, I love a good ring light. This one here is thirty dollars. So if you look at the different options, I have all of them. Um, the ring light at thirty dollars, the RGB LED photography lighting at three sixty nine, and the softbox lighting is at sixty five. So you've got some different options there with pricing. I'd recommend you go with the mid pricing one at 65, which is the soft box. That's the one that I have. Okay. 
Now let's get into webcams. <laughs> So right now I'm looking at my webcam and it is a Logitech webcam. We're gonna go over my recommendations. So this is the one that I'm using right now. This is the Logitech Brio. It is a 4K HD webcam. It is beautiful. I love what I'm able to accomplish with this one. When I do sessions on Skype, it has a feature to blur the backgrounds. I'm sure I could figure it out with the other programs that I use. But, it, but the quality on this as compared to my laptop webcam or some of the other webcams that I have, this one is far superior. It is definitely not the most expensive out there, but it is pricey at $180. Compared to the webcam on my computer, there's no comparison. So right now I'm using an HP Spectra i7. And although it is a amazing computer, the webcam on it does not compare to a Logitech Brio. My next uh, computer being a MacBook and uh, the webcam on that still does not compare. So I've got both a PC and a MacBook that I work on, but the webcam, uh, I like to get a webcam and my webcam, I can't show it to you because I'm talking through the webcam, but it is on a tripod. I'll show that to you in a in a second, my sister used the, uses the Logitech HP Pro um, C920. This one is half the price at $79. It's still a fantastic camera. And if you compare hers to mine, you can see some differences in lighting, especially at the nighttime. The Logitech Brio is better with the nightlight. But this one is a fantastic webcam, the Logitech HD Pro webcam c 920 at 79 dollars that's at aliciolittle.com forward slash 920 i hope these links make it a lot easier for you guys to find these on amazon there was like the link the links are so long so reina on my team um shortened them all up and made pretty links thank you reina love you you're amazing so the this one, yes, is $79. And if I just go back one slide, oops, go back one slide. This one is $180 on Amazon. Uh, I bought mine during the pandemic and they were out of stock for like crazy. I bought mine for double this price during the pandemic. But now price has gone down. It's it's $180. I do recommend Logitech as a company. I have had tr I have tried others, had my team members try others, and Logitech is superior. One of the things that I recommend is a webcam arm. Can you see how this would be amazing to use? Right now I have my microphone on a microphone arm, but a webcam arm, this one is just $29. So when the webcam comes out of the box, they want you to put it on the top of your computer. And now you're like looking down at the webcam or you have to put your laptop up on boxes to look up. Don't do that. Do not do that. Get a tripod or a webcam arm. Here's a great one for you. This webcam arm is $28. You can go to aliciolittle.com forward slash arm, aliciolittle.com forward slash arm, and that will definitely help you. And let me just say it one more time. Do not take the webcam out of the box, pluck it on the top of your computer and look down like this or like this so that you're looking in the webcam. I can adjust this webcam, you know, with my seating and how I feel um, and with what I'm doing, it's easy to move back and forth. When it's on one of these webcam arms, you can position it. If I had this with me, I could have turned it around the room real easily. So there's a lot of options. This is the one I like. It's only $28, aliciolittle.com forward slash arm. Got, glad you guys got that. The next one, I'm using this one, right now it's a tripod so you can put your webcam on a tripod this is actually the one that i use here which can be found at aliciolittle.com forward slash tripod why do i like this tripod well they show that you can use it with the phone which i have this tripod again i was wondering if, if i have it around here it's over there across the room but i have it for um my phone as well and I have one for my webcam, two separate ones. I didn't put the price on here, but I think it's like $18, $19, something like that. But now I can move my webcam up and down. I can adjust it 
So it, you know, this one has a 360 rotation ball. So I can adjust the webcam. Hang on, let me just show you. I can adjust the webcam, like I can move it up higher and then adjust it to look down on me if I want that look. So now when I'm looking up, uh, the, I don't like the door in the frame, so I got to bring it closer. Now when I'm looking up, I'm like, hey, everybody, it's Alicia. So it's just a different look. So if you looked at the webcam right now, it's tilted down towards me. So it's completely up to you how you want the webcam to look. Do you like it tilted down towards me like that? I could go even higher. I'm on a tripod. Let's have some fun here. I'm on a tripod. Now let's tilt it down even more. So now I have this look, getting the door out of the frame, coming over more, coming closer. And I'm like, hi, everybody. It's Alicia. How are you doing? And I'm really looking up into the camera. <laughs> so the look is totally dependent on what you want. Usually I put it lower and horizontal to me, something like that, as I'm looking at it. So we'll go over positioning, how you position yourself in the camera and stuff in a minute. So got it? Everybody saw? Yes, you saw that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. So tripod or webcam arm, all right? And remember, a webcam can only do so much. If you don't have good lighting, you know, the Logitech Brio is going to be great in low light. But if you have bad lighting, come on, it's not going to do good overall. So remember to always check the lighting. The Brio operates in low lighting, but do your best to get your lighting on point. If people cannot see you, they are going to leave your live stream, okay? All of these tips are really great too for when you're making a YouTube video. So you're doing a YouTube video, you still have to make sure your audio quality is on point, your lighting is on point. This Sure mic, I'm gonna show it to you in a minute, but I have to make sure that it's pointing towards me because this it's this type of directional mic. When I have another mic that sits like this and I have to make sure that the forward facing part that's flat is pointed towards me. So you also have to understand your equipment. So I hope that you're liking this class so far. We're gonna keep going. Let's talk about your microphone. So audio quality is so important. I just want you to shout it out and tell me, do you agree that when someone has poor audio, it's very hard to focus on them? You wanna change the channel, change the YouTube video, get off that live stream. If their audio isn't good, if you can't hear them, bye-bye, you're gone. <laughs> anyone, anyone agree with me on that one? So do you notice how you listen more intently when you can hear someone clearly when their sound is great? Of course you do. So what microphone am I using right now? I'm using the Shure MV7 USB podcast microphone. My friend Deb Cole, Coach Deb, got me this microphone. I thank her so much for it. Um, this microphone, though, had I bought it, would be $249. I actually did buy one for another studio that I have. And so you can buy this at alicialittle.com forward slash sure, S-H-U-R-E. And it is a great microphone. It comes just how you see it. So I already had this microphone arm from my previous microphone and I connected, let me pull it up. You know, it connects right here. And this microphone arm is connected to my table. So it connects. It's uh, on my table. I'll show you that arm in just a minute, the exact one that I'm using. All right, let's keep going. Before this microphone, this was the microphone that I had, which is a mid-range microphone coming in at $59. This is the Fifine USB podcast microphone. You can go to alicialittle.com forward slash Fifine to grab it. It's only $59. $9 that is where to grab it on Amazon. I did like this microphone. I had great quality. People thought it was a Yeti microphone, which is a really great brand, which I don't own. So it's not in this PowerPoint, but if you're going for a great one, get the Sure. Now, um, so this was a good one. I also took that microphone and put it on this microphone arm. So it was sitting like this. And then this is the one that I previously had 
um, because it packs nicely in my backpack. <laughs> so it is a travel microphone and it's only 30 bucks. So if you're on a budget, this microphone will be sufficient. A lot of people were impressed by this microphone quality. It's called the XII VIO. I don't know. That's, I guess, Roman numerals, whatever. It, but it's only $30. So what I want you to pay attention to if you get this microphone is look at that image that I have right there. Do you see how the logo is here? And I'm showing you that you need to have this part of the microphone facing your mouth because that's where it picks up. So if it was turned around the other way, you're not going to be picking up the microphone and the quality is not going to be that good. All right. So um, yes. So great. All right, here, let's keep going with this presentation. So then you want a microphone stand an adjustable suspension stand is what you're looking for. Mine was only $23. I checked this morning. It's still $23 on Amazon, aliciaLittle.com forward slash M stand. You're going to find stands ranging from $23 to hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I just wanted to keep it simple. This stand does its job. It has different levels of tightening for my adjustment and how I want the stand to move, but I'm overall extremely happy with it. And at $23, you can't, you can't say that that's not a good deal. One of the things I like about this stand, I disconnected it from mine right now, but it also has a stand for your phone. So if you were to talk into the microphone, I'd be facing this way, looking at the microphone. Let me, let me turn my cam. You're going to see my other wall. This is my other wall, which we'll go over in a minute. But um, it has a filter, a pop filter, which you could put in front of it. But the Shure mic already has a great filter and it's a condensing microphone. So I put that back there. But it has a piece right here that connects for your iPhone. So if your iPhone has a, um, what do you call that, teleprompter on it, you could be reading the teleprompter and talking into the mic, which is great for podcasters. And then it's adjustable. You know, you can see how adjustable this uh, stand is right here. Did you like that stand? Do you like it? Yes, yes. Okay, great. Let's keep going. So now we have, oh, now you can see my other wall. Hey, the problem with like moving this webcam every five minutes, is that I gotta adjust it back for my OCD to make sure that everything looks good. Okay, now, are you ready to talk about our background? Yes, 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 let's talk about your background. So you can get a real background um, or you can have a virtual background and you know, like Zoom has those virtual backgrounds. And let me just say, I do not like virtual backgrounds. Let me just repeat it again. I do not like the virtual backgrounds, especially when like sometimes part of your head gets cut off or it gets pixelated around you. We've all seen those virtual backgrounds somebody uses and they move their head too fast or their lighting is off and their head's all pixelated. Nobody wants to see half of your brain gone because you're using a virtual background. So what I recommend are photo backdrops. Now, this one that I have right here behind me, it's not a real brick wall. It is a, it is made for photography and videography. The interesting thing about it is when you actually look at it, like how I'm looking at it right now, it looks off focus, but then in the webcam, it looks perfect. I don't know how they do it, but that's one thing. When I opened it up, I was like, this looks so off focus, but it was perfect. So this one comes in all different sizes. I made the mistake of buying one that was like seven feet by five feet, which sounded like a lot to me because I don't know, I'm five feet tall, I guess. But anyway, it was not sufficient. And when I was on webcam, you could see half of the wall at the bottom, like over here would be white and couldn't see up top. But this one goes complete floor to ceiling for me, ceiling to floor, floor to ceiling for me and had plenty to cut out that was extra. So, uh, sorry, webcam, I'm just readjusting it as I move it around. So um, I got the 12 feet by 10 feet and had to cut it off and throw that extra away or could have used it for something else. But I recommend that you measure your wall and get it to fit as much as your wall as you can. Um, or go overboard so that you have to cut it away. At just $56.88, this one was the best deal that I could find. You'll find back 
backdrops that range in the hundreds and hundreds of dollars. But this one is, um, you know, is, is not bad. So let's see. Okay. So let's talk about my next backdrop. You ready for that one? This is my retro black brick wall backdrop. I just wanted to say that out loud. Okay, let me turn my webcam and show you as I talk about it. So now you can see this, it, it is a black wall. Um, and so sometimes I, I, you know, I have to make sure my lighting's on point, but sometimes I just love a black wall. Even if I'm wearing a black top, a black wall will make me pop. Um, so I really do like to have the black wall backdrop. I also think it's professional when somebody's watching you they're They, I feel like their eyes focus on you more than when you've got a lot of stuff going on in the background. So, um, for my backgrounds, I have had stuff on the wall, like shelves and books and blah, blah, stuff all over it and flowers. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes I just like a plain background. When it's black, I usually just like it plain. I do have a neon light that I'll put up in some stuff um, sometimes as well. But I find for when I'm presenting, I like there to be the least amount of distractions in my background as possible for my niche and what I'm presenting. When I had books in my background, I would get messages from people later saying, what was the fourth book down? It looked interesting. I'm like, the fourth book down. Were you listening to anything I said in the presentation? It wasn't about the books on my shelf. And I'm like, oh, I'm just distracting people. Then they ask me what this is over here on this shelf. And I mean, we're getting support tickets about what's on my shelf. So I'm like, that's it. The shelves are gone. <laughs> so no more shelves. And I just have the backdrops. What do you guys prefer? Do you guys um, love the backdrops or do you like the... Um, do you like it when somebody has a bookshelf to each its own and everybody's audience is different, but my preference is a plain wall. Okay. Size matters. <laughs> what do I mean? Look on both of the, the slides that I have here about your backdrop. What am I showing you? The different sizes to get this one, a 12 foot by 10 foot, this one, a 10 foot by eight foot, the 10 foot by eight foot did fit on the wall, but I had I have a few inches on the side that didn't fit. So I wish they would have had one a little bit bigger. They didn't. If I really wanted to wrap around or make it bigger, I would have ordered two, but, but it's good enough. It does the job and it's all in, um, it's all in the frame when I'm doing it, but size does matter. Oh, the links. So if you want the red brick wall photo backdrop, Alicia little.com forward slash red back. And this one is black back. So those are the two backgrounds that you can use. We've covered a lot so far. We've talked about lighting. We've talked about webcams. We've talked about microphones and we've talked about backgrounds. Now we're going to talk about software. Okay. One of my favorite softwares to use is StreamYard. What do I love about it? Um, is that you can have multiple if it, this is like having your virtual TV show and it live streams to your Facebook page, your Facebook group, and you can have multiple people inside your stream. I think I've had eight people in a stream at once, all having a conversation like the Brady Bunch. Um, and what I love about it is that you can also share your screen. So you can do a presentation like this and share your screen on StreamYard. I find StreamYard to be very engaging. So on StreamYard, I can tell people, all right, tell me what you think in the comments. And when they comment, that comment appears wherever it's also live streaming and in my StreamYard backend so that I can put it up on the screen. And we can also see people's comments. I can show it to the whole world. People love it when you call out their name. They love it when you showcase their question. So I love StreamYard because of that. If you've seen me on live streams, then you've seen me use StreamYard. If you haven't seen me on live streams, that means that you're not paying attention and you need to do that. Um, so uh, yes, it has a multi-chat function as well. My friend Ryan told me this. Um, that this was important to mention. So you can have 
Like I'll have Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and I'll be streaming on all three platforms at one time. And it will bring in the comments from all three platforms and I will see them in my back office and I can push them to the screen or address them. So thank you, Ryan, for reminding me of that. It has this multi-chat function that is beautiful with StreamYard. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. I love StreamYard. Okay. So the next thing I love about StreamYard is that you can have some like backgrounds to the frame. So while you're in there, it's, it can have a background around your you so that you can get some logo and branding. And it, it also has like overlays and different things that you can do, which is great. And you can also play commercials. So while you're on StreamYard, if I had a commercial for one of my courses, I could play the commercial in between um, interviews. Or I would say something like, all right, everybody, right now we're gonna take a commercial break. And I would push it to commercial and I would come back after the commercial break and say, all right, we're back. So now I can be advertising my stuff in between a live stream. It is also amazing. It's also amazing. My friend Patty, one of the things that Patty loves about StreamYard is that it also has some amazing backdrops. So you can have like a grand piano in your background and it looks more real than a lot of the Zoom backgrounds and that sort of stuff. So um, StreamYard is a platform that sits alone by itself. So you don't use it with Zoom or GoToWebinar or any other software, you just use StreamYard. It has to be used on Google Chrome. So you log into Google Chrome, you log into StreamYard, and then you connect your destinations, the different places that you wanna stream on, and then you press go and you stream on those places. And then as you're streaming on those places, it, um, it has that multi-chat functionality and all this other stuff in it. I've used it for a while and I will tell you that it continues to improve. The first time it had the video feature, it was like only two minute long video. I was like, what? Now it's 10 minutes long. I prefer it was like 30 minutes long, but okay, I'll, I'll live with 10 minutes. So it does broadcast to Twitter using Periscope. So I use my Periscope account, which is connected to my Twitter account, and I live stream on Twitter that way. So I live stream on, um, on Twitter. So right, a, a lot of the time I use GoToWebinar like this right now. I'm on GoToWebinar and recording on a platform called GoToWebinar. Um, but I do also use Zoom, but when I'm live streaming, I'm always using StreamYard. So lots of different platforms that I use. It just depends on the presentation that I'm giving or the recording that I want to make. And, uh, and that determines what platform that I will use. So um, yes, and for those of you who are, who are like Periscope, it's still around and it is the way to connect StreamYard with Twitter so you can live stream on Twitter. Okay. So, oops, let me go back. One stream. So we talked about StreamYard, but one stream is the platform that I like the second best. So what do I love about one stream? That on one stream, you can go live as if you're live. So it's an as if you're live presentation. What does that mean? That means that you can take a recording and play it on one stream and other people don't know that you're not live. Isn't that amazing? So you take a pre-recorded video, right? Let's say we take this video, we download the recording and we upload it to OneStream. And now we tell OneStream, stream this video as if it's live all over in my Facebook group, in this pay on this page, on this Twitter account, on this YouTube account, and it will stream it as if it's live. So right now I have 50 pages loaded up into OneStream. And so I could, I would never do all 50, but I have done like 20 pages, uploaded a video, streamed it live all at the same time across 20 pages. Um, I love that it has multiple platforms. I use Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And the fact that it can schedule, I could upload a video now to schedule for next month as if it's live. So think about the different things that you can do for your business and your brand. If you could schedule more, right? Schedule more. Now, why would we want to schedule a video as a live stream? Does, so why would we want to schedule a video as a live stream 
instead of putting it in like a scheduling software, why we want, why do we want to schedule it as if it's live? Because all of the platforms love live video. They love live video. So your video gets higher rankings. It gets seen by more eyes. Just remember that people might be commenting and you're not seeing the comments unless you're also there on the page looking at the comments. So have somebody else looking at the comments while you're live streaming and engaging with people. And that solves that problem. AliciaLittle.com forward slash one stream or forward slash stream yard if you want to check both of those out i love them zoom is also a great platform to use they've improved tremendously as their business has boomed since this pandemic zoom is a great tool to use what can you do with zoom so much you can host meetings and conferences but we're talking about live streaming one of the interesting things is that Zoom as a platform is considered a live streaming platform. The next thing is that what you can do with it's Zoom is you can also take your Zoom recording and stream it to a Facebook page or a Facebook group. You just connect it with your Zoom account, which I've done on plenty of occasions until really um, I got to love StreamYard and then I stopped using Zoom. Why? Because Zoom will only let me stream to my Facebook page or my Facebook group. While StreamYard, bam, I stream live in eight different places. Okay, others, OBS Studio, Ecamm, there's other tools and software and resources out there. I just went over the ones that I like and love and you will like and love. Okay, so now let's talk about you. Are you ready? So the first question is, how should you sit? So when you're doing this live stream and I moved my webcam around so many times, but how should you sit? So right now I'm sitting on a table that is uh, not on the ground, not a low table or a desk, but like a bar table. So it's bar height. I like bar height because it makes me sit up. My feet actually can't touch the ground. Remember, I'm five feet tall, five feet, one inch and a half, actually. So <laughs> I like the height. I also know that it makes me sit taller and have better posture. Right now, I'm sitting on a chair that has a back, but the other chair that I have next to me is a stool. So I will sit on a stool or on a high back chair, just depending on the presentation that I'm doing. Usually on a stool, I'll get better posture as well. Having the best posture uh, available is important. I also have a back brace posture supporter. If you guys have seen those, they're all over everywhere. But sometimes if I feel like I'm worried that I'm going to slouch, maybe I'm tired getting on a live stream, I'll put under this back brace that forces my shoulders back and for me to sit up straighter. And then I look better on the live stream. So, but you should sit up high. How much of you should be in the frame? That really depends. I've done live streams where my whole body is in the frame because I'm selling clothes. But usually for most of us speakers, as we're doing our live stream, we want just about this much of our head to be away from the top, right? And I like to have my upper body in the picture. Now, it also depends on how much of the room you want in the picture. So I don't want my door in the picture. So I'm gonna position myself, you know, I could move over a little bit more. Oh, see, the stool would have been easier. That's not, this chair not moving. But I can move over just a little bit more or position the webcam to where I'm not seeing the door. Um, and then it's totally dependent on you whether you want your mic in the frame or not. I like to have my mic in the frame because I believe that it adds an element to my video. Look, I'm talking, you see me? I'm talking, it's the mic. I don't know. I just like the way that it looks. It gives me more of that radio show appearance, but that would be something um, totally up to you on how you want to appear with the mic. So this is how, how you should sit. You know, your upper body in the frame, sit up straight and have just a, a peak right here above. Now, let me show you what it looks like. If you're, if you're cutting off your head, that doesn't look good. Where's the rest of my head? And then if you go too high up, let me show you this, right? If you go too high up, this is a mistake I see people make all the time. They have like so much, oh, come on, webcam. Oh, yeah, all right. They have so much space on the top. You could put another person up here. And so you're not, um, 
you know, in the frame as much as I would like. See, now I'm talking to you, right? And so we have a better relationship at this angle. Um, the next question is, where would you, where do you look? So um, I have slides going on right now on my computer, which is below this webcam. Let's see if we can, if I can show you. So you see, there's my computer. So my computer is below my webcam. Now, I do not want to be looking at my computer. All right, let me present to you like this. Hi, everybody, it's Alicia. Okay, today we're gonna be talking about live streaming. We're gonna go over, or like this. Hi, everybody, it's Alicia. <laughs> let me do that again. Hi, everybody, it's Alicia. Today we're gonna be talking about live streaming. We're gonna talk about how you should sit how much of you should be in the frame and where you should look when doing a presentation. Do you see the difference in eye contact? What a difference eye contact makes. So if you're new to live streaming, one tip that I tell my students is put a post-it pad on your computer screen that reminds you to look up at the webcam. Do not look at the computer. You can also move your computer up if you want, like put it on a box so that it's higher up so that it's closer to, you, to your webcam. So sit up straight, just have a smidgen between you and the top of the screen, and then have as much of your upper body in the frame as you can, and look directly in the webcam. I hope that this has been helpful to you. Let me just give you some tips on how to start a live stream. The worst type of live stream is started like this. Are we live? Can you hear me? Are we live? Does anybody know if we're live? Are we live? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Is anybody there? Hmm. Is anybody there? Hello? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Oh my gosh. This is how you should start off a live stream. Hi everybody, it's Alicia. Are you ready? Today we're gonna talk about live streaming. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. Glad to see everybody here today. Live streaming is our topic. Are you ready? If you're ready, I don't care where you're watching this live stream on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, just type ready in the comments because live streaming, that's the topic of the day. And this is something you need to hear. So <laughs> do you see the difference? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Woo. Do you see the difference? So you know, it's important to start it off with energy because when people go back to watch the replay, <laughs> they see that beginning. And if your beginning is you fidgeting all over the place, trying to see, hello, anybody there <laughs> on the webcam, they're like, what is this? But if you start off, I like to start off with hands waving and motion because as people are scrolling in their newsfeed and watching the replay, they're gonna see the movement. Oh, right? <laughs> so ha have some fun. How do you end a live stream? You say thank you to everybody for coming. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I had a really great time with you here today. If you had a great time, go ahead and type into the comments and tell me, give me some takeaways. What did you learn today? Or tell me how you enjoyed today's session. Go ahead, type it in the comments. It would mean the world to me. So you end it by saying thank you and asking for feedback. Okay, and then how do you keep a live stream engaging? You ask if anybody has questions. Do you have any questions? Type them in the comments. You guys have any questions? Let me know, right? Or asking them to do something. If you agree, type agree in the comments, whatever platform you are watching this on right now, type agree in the comments or show me some love. Give this video a like or some love. Let's go, let's go, right? So you also ask them to write it down if you're teaching something. Okay, so in today's class, we're gonna be teaching three things that you need to know to be better at live streaming. Get out your pen and your paper because you're gonna be taking notes. Go get it now. I will wait 10 seconds. Let me count down. 10, nine, eight. You're supposed to be going to get that pen and paper, right? So, you know, have them write different things down. So you're like, number one is equipment. Write that down, equipment. So bring them in and, and engage them. It's up to you to be engaging. Now, that's all that I have for you here today. I hope that you learned a lot about live streaming. I hope that you 
learned a lot. I hope that you enjoy this episode of the Digital Jampreneur. For more from Internet Income Jamaica, please visit our website, internetincomejamaica.com. Go to courses, look at the different courses that we have, read our blogs and look around. I also invite you to follow me on social media. I'd love to connect on Facebook, on Instagram, and on LinkedIn. So let's connect on social media as well. I hope that your live streams are all a success. Bye for now.